Hello, I'm Phil Jones. I'm cheese specialist and cheese grader for Winterdale Creamery. My job is to look at the cheese and make sure it goes out to the customer at the top and best quality. I've been in the industry for 40 years and travelled far afield internationally judging at cheese shows and grading cheese. And I've been at Wensleydale Creamery for 20 years. It's a beautiful place to work and we have some beautiful scenery. We're very lucky. So today we're going to ask the question, why is Wensleydale cheese more crumbly than say a cheddar and what are the benefits of that? So first, let's have a look at the cheese. This is a Wensleydale tall called a tall because of its shape. And this is the traditional format a Wensleydale would be made in. So I'm just going to turn it over. We have our VAT identification and date of make on the back there. I'm going to take a bore using a cheese iron. So the cheese iron is the grader's tool for looking really at the centre of the cheese. And then when I'm going to take a bore, I'm looking at the back of the iron, which is very clean, no fat. And the cheese, lovely clean in flavour. We replace the bowl, which is really good housekeeping. And then you will see the texture of the cheese. It's open. And if I just work it in my fingers, and just over this salad, you can see it crumbles. Now if I did that with a cheddar it wouldn't crumble, it would be a, a solid ball. Lovely, clean, and if I just taste that, smooth and creamy, and yet crumbly. So why does it crumble? Well if I take you through the cheese making process, our milk comes from 44 farms. And the milk is very important because it has to be the right quality. What we look for in milk is a, is a combination of fat and protein and that allows us to make good quality cheese. So our farmers are very very important to us. When we take that milk in um, we pasteurize it so we take out all the unwanted bacteria and then we add starter and starter is the bacteria, the good bacteria, which we subculture uh, daily at the creamery. We had quite a lot of uh, starter, which creates acidity, and we would add more starter than, say, to a cheddar make. So that means that the crumbly cheese has a lot more starter acidity in the first place. What we do then is we add rennet, and we use microbial rennet, which is suitable for all vegetarians, and that causes the, uh, the milk to clot. So on clotting with the higher acidity, then the clot is a lot denser. Next in the process we cut that clot, which actually forms the curds and whey. And then we stir that curds and whey, and we scald. Scalding isn't as harsh as it sounds, and all we're doing is raising the temperature of the milk, which is around 31 degrees up by a degree. Because we scald less than we would say a cheddar, that allows the more moisture to be retained in the cheese. And these are all processes which cause the cheese at the end of the day to become more crumbly. So it's the, the, the more acidity, so our rennet to mill time, the time we add the rennet to when we mill it, um, is a lot shorter, let's say, than for a cheddar. And we're looking at something like two hours 30 compared to a four hour 30 cheese. So at the end of the day, um, because of that process, then the cheese, uh, its melting characteristics are a lot different to a cheddar. So if you melt, um, a Wensleydale on toast or on a pizza, you will still get a lot of solid particles within it. It doesn't go all fat and greasy like a cheddar would. And then that uh, gives you a structure which gives you a far different texture in your food. So, then in a, in a brief nutshell is why Wensleydale is more crumbly than a cheddar. Thank you.